Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In my previous videos in this series, we've been discussing the health benefits of fasting. And before going forward with more specific health benefits, I think it's important to stop a moment and discuss a hormone that isn't very well known these days. We speak so often about the weight gain hormones, specifically insulin, and to a lesser degree, cortisol. Well, we'll be discussing cortisol much more in depth in my weight gain series, so you'll have that to look forward to. But there is another hormone that has great benefit and purpose for the body. This hormone is a counter-regulatory hormone, which you may remember from some of my other videos. Just before we wake up, our body releases what are known as counter-regulatory hormones, such as growth hormone, cortisol, adrenaline, and glucagon. There you go. See, there is some purpose in order to things here at Be A Loser, after all. So, without further ado, let's talk about my favorite hormone, glucagon. So let's start by defining what glucagon is. We've already stated that it's a counter-regulatory hormone, meaning that it helps to regulate blood glucose levels. Glucagon is secreted by alpha cells found in the islets of Langerhans and the pancreas. These alpha cells are surrounded by beta cells, which release insulin. So this indicates how close the relationship between these two hormones is. Now, glucagon's main purpose in the body is to prevent serum glucose from falling too low. In order to achieve this, it stimulates the liver to release glucose, stored as glycogen, into the bloodstream through a process known as glycogenolysis. For those of you who follow my T2D series, this is the process that helps to reverse your diabetes. Glucagon also promotes the liver to create new glucose from amino acids in a process we already know, gluconeogenesis. Glucagon also stimulates adipose tissue, also known as fat tissue, to release some of its stored fat, also known as triglycerides, as free fatty acids. As we know, this is once more the point of fasting and what allows us to lose weight as well as lowering cholesterol. And finally, glucagon reduces how much glucose is consumed by the liver so that as much glucose as possible can be secreted into the bloodstream to maintain glucose levels. Now, that one sounds bad under current medical advice. I mean, doctors are trying every way they can to reduce blood sugar because of glucotoxicity. But as we know from my other videos, glucotoxicity does far more damage in the tissues aka the liver, pancreas, eyes, etc., than it does in the blood. But doctors prescribe insulin in order to reduce the blood sugar. And here's the kicker. Glucagon is not secreted while there is insulin in the system. That's right. Glucagon is not released in the presence of insulin, and insulin is not released in the presence of glucagon. So, how do we stimulate the release of glucagon? Well, insulin is generally released in response to high blood sugar levels. And so glucagon is released in response to low blood sugar levels. And glucagon release is prevented by the high blood sugar as well as ingested carbohydrates. Glucagon is crucial for our bodies when fasting so that the liver can release stored glycogen as glucose when we've not eaten for extended periods of time. And that leads us into the real benefit of glucagon and fasting. It's a process known as autophagy. I'm sure most of you have never heard of it, and it will become very apparent why in a moment. So let's start by defining what autophagy means. The word autophagy is derived from the Greek auto, which means self, and phasia, which means to eat. So the word autophagy literally means to eat oneself. Now, unlike Pizza the Hut, we don't actually do that. The process is actually the body's way of ridding itself of old cell parts, such as organelles, proteins, and cell membranes that cannot be sustained. This is a natural, regulated, and orderly process. 
Now there's another process known as apoptosis, which is derived from the Greek words apo, meaning separation, and tosis, meaning falling off. This process is designed to encourage programmed cell death. Now I know that sounds a little morbid and scary, but you must realize that cells are designed to die after they have divided a specified number of times. This is integral to overall health of the body. Dr. Fung's analogy of apoptosis is like having a favorite car. The car works great for many years, but then over time, it starts to break down, rust out, and generally fall into disrepair. This car that you love is now costing you thousands of dollars to maintain. So, instead of continuing to pour money into a junker, you send it off to the scrapyard and buy a new car. Now all the problems involved with your formerly beloved junker are gone, and you have a new shiny car to drive around in. And it's the same with the body and its cells. The cells over time become old and junked up, and the body uses apoptosis to allow them to die and be replaced with new ones. However, sometimes instead of replacing the entire cell, the body just wants to replace parts of the cell on a subcellular level. Just like your car. You don't need to replace the entire car if you have a flat tire or a dead battery. So instead of killing the entire cell, the process of autophagy replaces some of the subcellular organelles. This is accomplished by sending the cellular debris to a specific organelle known as a lysosome that contains enzymes designed to break down these cellular proteins. So you may be wondering, how the hell did we get from glucagon to autophagy? Well, autophagy was first discovered in 1962 when researchers noticed increased number of lysosomes in rat livers after infusing them with, wait for it, glucagon. And it was a Nobel-winning scientist, Christian de Duve, who termed this autophagy. Damaged subcellular parts become damaged and marked for destruction and then sent to the lysosome. Now remember that glucagon is somewhat like the anti-insulin. If insulin goes up, then glucagon levels go down. And if glucagon levels go up, then insulin levels go down. As we know, when we eat, this causes increases in insulin and thus decreases in glucagon. But when we don't eat or fast, insulin levels decrease and glucagon levels increase. This boost in glucagon is what triggers autophagy. There are several ways to generate glucagon, such as exercise, in very low carbohydrate or ketogenic diets. But the greatest known method for raising glucagon levels is fasting, and thus the best way to boost the effects of autophagy. One benefit of this is that all the accumulated cellular junk in the body may be responsible for the effects of aging. By allowing the process of autophagy to cleanse the body of this subcellular junk, we may indeed be stimulating anti-aging. And fasting has benefits beyond just triggering autophagy. Once the cells have cleaned out the old broken down materials, growth hormone triggers the creation of brand new subcellular parts. Now if we remember from my fasting and exercise video, fasting increases the secretion of human growth hormone. A 1982 article published in the Western Journal of Medicine showed the results of a patient who fasted for 40 days for religious purposes. During this fast, insulin decreased 80%, glucagon increased 423%, and HGH increased 1,250%. Of course, that's a very long fast for most, but even shorter fasts show these benefits if seen at lower levels. But the point here is that during autophagy, the old cell components are broken down into their component amino acids and replaced. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. The consequences of accumulating these old, broken down proteins is noted in two main conditions. First are neurodegenerative disorders. A study published in 2015 in the Journal of Experimental Medicine showed that many of these disorders stem from accumulation of deformed proteins in and around neurons, inducing gradual brain cell death and subsequent loss of mental faculties. Autophagy protects us by removing these proteins. In Huntington disease, a fatal genetic disorder that causes the progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain, autophagy removes the Huntington protein. 
In Alzheimer's, autophagy removes the amyloid beta, which is created by the APP, or amyloid beta precursor protein. In Parkinson's disease, it removes alpha synuclein, known as SNCA. And in dementia, it removes the microtubule associated with protein tau, known as MAPT. I'll link studies that support all of these statements. Now, the second consequence of broken down proteins is cancer. Autophagy plays a role in preventing the onset of cancer and inhibiting growth of early stage cancers. A study published in 2015 in the Clinical Cancer Research showed that it does this by suppressing pro-cancer processes such as chronic inflammation, DNA damage response, and genome instability. Unfortunately, these protective roles may also support the growth of more advanced tumors. Now, autophagy helps us to fight infectious diseases. In a study published in 2015 in the Journal of Experimental Medicine, the researchers targeted three specific ways in which autophagy protects us. First, by direct removal of microbes from inside of cells, known as xenophagy. Second, by removal of toxins created by infections. And third, by modulation of the immune response to infections. Several studies have shown that autophagy removes microbes such as mycobacterium tuberculosis, group A streptococcus, as well as HIV. Autophagy also helps regulate inflammation. It can actually increase inflammation in response to pathogen invasion of the body by turning on the immune response. It can also then decrease inflammation brought about by that immune response by clearing the cells of the antigens that are stimulating the response. Autophagy can extend your lifespan. In another study published in 2015 in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, the researchers determined that autophagy is activated as a response to cellular stress, allowing them to become more resilient and efficient with their expended energy. This is particularly noted in the mitochondria, where autophagy removes dysfunctional mitochondria that produce harmful oxidative damage of the cells. This finding is supported by another study published in 2014 in the current pharmaceutical design. Autophagy has been shown to protect against some psychiatric disorders. Two studies published in 2014 and one in 2015 showed that disruptions to autophagic processes have been associated with increased risk of depression and schizophrenia. Postmortem studies of the brains of individuals suffering from these two disorders showed deficiencies in essential autophagy pathways. And finally, for all the bodybuilders and exercise enthusiasts out there, autophagy improves muscle performance. When exercising, we place stress on our cells Energy use goes up and components get worn out faster. Autophagy is then increased in response to this. A study in 2012 published in Nature determined that this had the benefits of maintaining energy use balance within the cell, reduce the amount of external energy required by more efficiently recycling existing energy molecules, and ensuring that degraded cellular components are removed before they begin to cause any trouble. Sounds like a lot of benefits for something you've probably never heard of, right? And all of that without needing to resort to drugs. I mean, you don't need a prescription to fast. But to close this video, it's important to know what can actually stop the process of autophagy. And the answer is very simple. Eating. Glucose, insulin, which decreases glucagon, and protein, all turn off autophagy. Even a small amount of the amino acid leucine can completely stop autophagy. So the process of autophagy is tightly tied to fasting, more so than dietary change or caloric restriction. But of course there needs to be balance in autophagy, as in everything. Too much autophagy, as we've seen, can have the opposite effect of what we're looking for and lead to complications and sickness. Once again, it's the natural cycle. We cleanse our cells when we fast, and we grow new cells and cell parts when we eat. Nature and the life within it is all about balance. And that wraps up this video. If you're watching for the first time or new to the channel, please subscribe and enable alerts by clicking the bell 
so you receive alerts when new videos post. As always, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser. All right, you waited till the end. Thanks so much. We made a thousand subscribers. I, ca I cannot believe it. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And the stories and the comments that are coming in, I'll tell you, they really touch my heart. The success I'm seeing people have. And then people writing in, talking about the struggles they're having, seeking my advice, which you know I very humbly give, uh, from what I know and what I research, and I'm constantly learning as well. Um, so I just want to, I'm blown away. We passed a thousand last week and, and we're, we're just, we're rushing forward and, and I, I see that the shares going up and the likes and the comments and everything. So please continue to share with anyone you know uh, or see that you think can be helped by this channel and the information on it, uh, at the very least, just to get them started researching things for themselves. So one thing I would like to do to all my current subscribers is ask that if you speak another language or several other languages, please consider putting subtitles on some of the videos that you have found helpful so that we can expand this beyond just English speaking countries. Because I do believe all over the world people are struggling with this and the answer is so simple. So. If anyone is interested in doing that, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, on our website, BeALoser.Today, I am adding a donate button. Now, there is no expectation of any donations. I've just received some comments and questions about whether or not there's a way to donate to the channel, and I don't have a Patreon page, which maybe in the future I don't know. And if you feel like you want to support the channel, Go ahead and donate, and I, guarantee, I can guarantee that any donations will be used 100% to support the channel. I, I think of this channel still as very fledgling. It's been a year, a little over a year, and I, I think we've made great improvements, but I think there's a long way to go, and there's still a lot more that I want to share with, with everyone. So thanks again so much. Remember that all this information is free and should be free. If you want to support the channel, feel free to donate. Um, otherwise, please consume this information, share it with others, and let's get the word out, get the truth out, and help as many people as we can. All right? So I'll see you, my favorite losers, next time. Take care.